Right, hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So I'm just in the house at the moment. It's an absolutely horrible day outside. It's cold and windy, raining. So I'm just chilling in the house, doing some design work on the laptop. So hopefully this job should be a nice straightforward, cut all the parts out, weld it together job. I'll be a bit of lathe work to do as well, because there's some spaces to make. So I'll just quickly show you what I'm designing, and then we can cut all these bits out. Right, so this is what we're gonna be making. So this is to go on the front linkage of a tractor and then the weight carrier, well the weight, the weight carrier blocks will bolt onto here and then the wafer weights will go onto the blocks. So you wanted it to hold two ton. Yeah, two ton is heavy, but it's also not that heavy. So that, I've designed this so it's all tabbed together. The customer actually sent me a picture of one he'd seen the same thing and I've sort of copied the pictures um, and, and, you know, making similar thing so it's all tabbed together so these are tabs here so it's basically basically just a case of cutting all the bits out and then welding them up so obviously these are your bottom link bottom link arms and then your top link and then these bolt holes are where the weight carriers bolt onto so yeah that's what we're going to be making so when I say weight carriers this is what I mean. These are the blocks that bolt onto the front of the tractor and then either your weight block or your wafer weights sit onto these. So there's two of them to go side by side. So I've just laid them next to each other and I've just checked, make sure the whole centers are, are right on my drawing. And I've just had to alter them a little bit on my drawing, just give them five mil more just because they, they were going to be too tight in the middle otherwise. So I've got my plate of steel on there ready, 15 mil. Then I've got all the parts organized a sheet cam now so that you know sorts me lead in my lead outs and then nest all my parts together so I can get all the parts out of the sheet size that I've got so I can save that onto my USB stick now and then load that into the plasma so that's all set up ready to go now I've I've done a test run to make sure it's all going to fit on the plate and it is going to be very tight on the edges but should get it all out without running off so yeah we'll uh, we'll start cutting that out now.
So that's all them bits plasmaed out now. So we'll dig all them out, give them a clean up. Hopefully they should all slot together and then it's just a case of welding it up. Right, so I've got this all cleaned up now. I have had to just die grind the holes a little bit. They were a little bit sort of tapered. Um, and giving it a clean up, obviously, where it's going to be welded on. And then on these tabs, I've just sort of had to round the corners off a little bit. Just because the, the corners are, you know, not, not sharp enough. I should have done them a little bit wider, really, but it's the first time I've ever done any tabs, so it's bit of a learning curve well not really i did them they're 17 mil wide and this is 15 mil plate but anyway it all fits together nice so yeah these were all cleaned up as well so now i can get these sat on there what i might do with that i think is i'll weld it down to the bench I'll give it a right good clean off weld that down to the bench then tack it on together and then when i weld these on when i weld these on it's not going to bow the plate or you know pull the plate So this plate 
has had a bit of a bow in it. Um, so when I tried to clamp it down to the bench, it was still not touching there. So what I've done is a little experiment is I've tack welded that bit of box onto the bench and I put that pry bar in there and pulled this end of the pry bar down with the clamps. It's a bit dangerous, but it's done it. It's pulled it down. So I might do the same on this side. There's still a little gap under there. Not that it really matters too much, but I'll tack that other bit of box section onto here and do the same that way. And I can weld that down onto the bench and it'll be nice and flat. Right, so it's all tacked up, ready to weld now. Um, I'll probably put some more bits in here. Extra strength, because like, there are your bolt holes. I'll have to, it's just worked out where the bolt holes are, I'll have to leave a bit there, otherwise the head of the bolt will catch on the weld. So it'll be a little bit there I'll have to leave. I'm not gonna preheat it, it's only 15 mil, so it's not really thick enough to worry about preheating it. And then when I come to weld down here, I might struggle to get in there with a big torch. So I might have to use that little welder with a little torch. But if I weld down the outside first, 
it should be nice and hot. And then the little welder should manage. Might just tax them across there to stop them splaying out. Right, so something's happened to me well, the, that little screen's gone off. It's usually it's one of them two fuses, but I've taken both of them out and they're all all right. When you pull the trigger, there's no power. So I might have to take the top off and have a look in, see if there's any other fuses on the inside. So I can't see any fuses on the board, but the little screen's come back on again now and uh, it works again now, so I think it maybe just got too hot. It doesn't have a fault light on it, fault light anywhere on it to tell you that it's got too hot. So anyway, it seems to be working again now. So uh, while that tops off, I'll give it a good blow out with the airline, give it a clean out. Do a clean out.
So it's got too hot and tripped out again. I've just realised when it says no numbers, that equals a fault. I just realised that now. So when them numbers go out, it means it's too hot or there's a fault. So I'll just wait for it to cool down again. So the only bit that I've got left to weld is that bit inside there. So I've managed to, I have managed to reach in there. So it tripped out again when it got to there. So there's a short one there. It tripped out there. And it tripped out there. So, oh, I'm there. Right, so that is that all welded up. I've got them welded in. So it's sort of cooled down enough now. So I just need to weld them up there, them up there, and them up there. But I'll turn it the right way up to do that. And then obviously upside down to do it the other way. So I didn't put that much heat management into it because if it pulls, twists a little bit, it doesn't really matter. You can see it's broken most of the tacks off anyway that I put onto the bench. There's only a few that are still left. So I'll chop them remaining few tacks off, clean them up, and then do the rest of the welding. I'll just down them, them bits to weld up down there as well, top and bottom. Right, so that is it all welded up. So I welded up the uh, tab holes as well on this side. So it has bowed a little bit, these end bits, but I, I suppose I could always heat straighten them again if I wanted to. It doesn't matter that much. Because uh, the pin, there's only a pin to go through there. And there's quite a bit of tolerance in the hole anyway on the link balls. So it's, that's not a problem. So it just wants to clean it off and put some paint on it now. Right, so we're back on with this thing again now. It's been a, a day or two. I've had some other jobs to do and make room for that. But yeah, we're back on with this. So I've, I have straightened it a little bit. I've just run the torch down there and there. That's straightened that out. And then same on this side. I just did one on this side. So that's, that's near enough now. So I'll give it a wash off and then we'll Spray it with red oxide and then spray it with John Deere green.
Well, as you can see, it's now red. So we'll, that's all, that's all dried. So we'll go over it with green now. Right, that's nice John Deere green now. So I'm just waiting for some bolts to come for them. I've just measured the length of them. So I'll go and get some of them in the morning and then we can bolt them on to here and then that'll be job done. Sit the weights on. I think the customer will have some pins for just normal Cat 3 um, pins. So I need to make some spaces now for the back of these blocks but they're not both the same when you measure them, they're different. So when I measure across here to there on this one, that measures about 60, 66mm and then when you measure it on the other one, this one measures 70 mil. So I suppose I could just make them 70 mil. It depends whether this distance to this dis to the edge where the weight sits is the same. I'll have to measure that because if it's not, one block will be sat slightly in front of the other one. Right, so we'll we'll chop far off at 72 for this one. We'll bolt this one on, and then we can measure from that surface back to the plate to get the length of these ones, and then. <clears throat> just, I just want to make sure they're both dead in line at the front, so that's how we're going to do that. And they've been, they've been better to make them out of some heavy walled tube, but I haven't got any, so I'm just going to use this 50mm round bar and then just drill a 20mm hole or 22mm hole through. Right, so I've got four of them spacer blocks made now. So we can bolt this one on to the frame. Only trouble is I've only got four bolts and they're not quite long enough. So there's some longer bolts coming on, whether it be on Tuesday, Saturday now. And they're only 8.8, .8, so I've got some 10.9s coming. But these will do just to get everything set up and get the stands made.
Right, so that's sat on there now, exactly like it's supposed to do. Got all the bolts in, all the stands in, all the spaces. So that weighs 110 kilos just by itself. So I've measured down from here to there, that is 295. From there to there is, I think it was 227. So my spacers want to be 68 mil for this one and then they're both the same. It doesn't really matter too much, but it's just nice if they're both bang in line. Yeah, if they, if they were a couple of mil out, it wouldn't matter. But yeah, so I'll make another four spacers now at 68 mil. And then I'll have to borrow two of the bolts out of there to bolt that one on until the new bolts come. So that's both blocks bolted on. They've only got two bolts a piece in at the moment, say, because I'm waiting for some longer bolts. Those were stronger ones. But they both fit anyway, both both level, both flush at the front, so that's good. No gap in the middle. So I've just sat these weights on just to show you. Obviously, if you're a farmer, you'll know anyway, but these are your wafer weights. So you just keep stacking them up until you get enough weight on or until it's full. They're 50 kilos a piece, so you, know, you get a lot of weight on there. And they're 110 kilos a piece anyway. So, yeah, there's a bit of height difference in them blocks between uh, in them spaces between one block and the other block. So it's a good job I checked that. Otherwise, not that it mattered too much, but there'd have been a bit of a step between the two weight carriers. Yeah, that's about all there is to this job. It would have been nice to see it on the tractor with all the weights on, but. So the bolts aren't coming until Tuesday. Uh, a lot of the stuff I make, I never get to see it being used anyway. People comment saying it'd be nice to you know, see it in action, but it's not often I get to see it in action anyway. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.